as an investor, let's say you have interest in companies X, Y, and Z. What if you actually had a testing platform to see how well that technology worked before you started raising the big money to get them through clinical trials? Also, eventually, you will be sick. What if you had access to technology that is right now cutting edge access to technology that otherwise you would have to wait 15 years to get? This year, my company won a position in the top 10 most innovative gene therapy companies in the world because we're answering those two questions. <laughs> and how are we doing that? We're doing that with partnerships and innovation. And what we're going to do is show the world that we can innovate care more quickly, get biotechnology companies that have promising technology up and running and leading their industries rather than waiting for a buyout in phase one or phase two from a bigger company. So how are we going to do that? Number one, step one is patient access. We have a, a partnership with a company called Integrative Health Systems and they are offering regenerative gene therapies today. So in case you want to know, you actually don't have to wait. <laughs> uh, this company is uh, fantastic. Right now it's using AAV gene therapy technology. AAV is a delivery method. Um, it's very safe and effective. Uh, the worst outcomes with this technology uh, right now is something like flu-like symptoms. The bad thing is you don't get the gene therapy. So we use immune suppression for the first uh, four to six weeks that the technology is used in humans. And a lot of people say, well, is the technology you use CRISPR? Well, AAV does deliver CRISPR. We don't use uh, CRISPR technology in clinic yet. Uh, we wait for reproducibility of data. Uh, to ensure that technology is safe. Remember, when people go through this platform, doctors actually have to sign off on every technology that you take. And we don't want bad outcomes, so we're waiting for more data on that. But this actually shows the vector going into the system. So how is gene therapy given? It's given by IV or injection. In some cases, when we're treating things like kidney or specific organs, it's given by image-guided, um, directed uh, delivery. It goes into the body. This is how most gene therapy looks that we use today due, due to uh, vectors uh, by IV. It goes into the body and the vector actually carries the therapeutic gene to the cell and delivers uh, the therapeutic uh, gene that then creates the protein that makes you healthier. Today, Integrative Health Systems uh, is most notably known for offering uh, telomerase uh, activation, lengthening the ends of your telomeres. Also, folistatin for regenerate, regenerating muscle mass, uh, clotho for kidney disease, and whole body rejuvenation, which is what most people actually come in for. Uh, we want to say thank you to uh, Maximum Life Foundation, who has sponsored a trial of 10 patients for um, Alzheimer's. So uh, mid to mild Alzheimer's, these patients get a fully paid for uh, treatment, which is really fantastic. The genes of interest that we have right now, um, outside of platforming other companies' technology, are the genes that we're going to talk about right now. This is one of my favorite. It's telomerase induction. It lengthens the ends of the chromosomes called the telomeres. In 2015, I became semi-famous for being the first person to ever take this gene therapy to show evidence of whether this technology would work in a human body. Uh, I've had a very good outcome. I actually uh, doubled it up with the next gene that I'm going to show you. So today you've heard a lot about the benefits of telomerase induction, lengthening the ends of the, the chromosomes. It helps with genomic stability. It helps create a younger, more youthful acting cell that can go on to healthy uh, cell divisions and cell death. Very exciting technology. The second one uh, that, we, that I took was folistatin. This increases muscle mass and has already been through safety and efficacy for two different diseases and passed for drug use in uh, muscular dystrophy. On the left here, we see this boy is suffering from muscular dystrophy, and this is him three months after the gene therapy. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I actually got into this industry to cure childhood disease. I wasn't looking for cures for aging. And so every one of our personal gene candidates through our company also treat a childhood disease. 
So this gene therapy worked in every animal model, including large primates, and um, has been successful in humans as well. Uh, the third gene that we're using this year, which was uh, brand new to humans, is called Clotho. Uh, most interest in this gene <laughs> through our company actually comes uh, for enhanced uh, cognitive effect. Um, it enhances the cognitive effect in animal models within a matter of a couple days with upregulation of the protein, uh, increasing their ability to solve problems. But it actually has a bigger impact on the body. It has implications in protecting against heart disease, and it helps regenerate uh, kidneys. Our last candidate will go live next year, and it is called PGC1 Alpha, and it has everything to do with the uh, biogenesis of mitochondria. It creates healthier, more robust mitochondria in the cell, and this sort of output is um, very beneficial for a slew of metabolic disorders, obesity, um, and uh, higher performance. So everything that we look at kind of blurs the line between uh, enhancement in regenerative medicine and preventative medicine. So um, that answers uh, some of your questions there. All four of these genes have increased lifespan significantly in animal models, and so that made them very good candidates for what we do. My company, BioViva, is now a data science company. So we couldn't actually legally treat patients, so we found a partner company that actually could and had a whole doctor's network. There's nine uh, doctors that are exclusive to that network now. So what does BioViva do? What do we do with our spare time? <laughs> we do data analysis. And this year, um, actually later this month, we launch our online repository. And we're really happy about this. So part of the valuation of our company actually comes from storing the first patient data in gene therapy. So the people who are going through the platform that I just showed you now are the first people in the world outside of me to go through regenerative gene therapies. And that data is precious. So what we needed to do in order to analyze that data effectively is we needed to build an online repository that gave us the ability to have HIPAA compliance. And then we added GDPR compliance so that we could open it to the public. In our studies, we don't have a control. You're the control. The general population is the control. And by sharing your data with us, we can actually see more evidently what's happening with these patients. In our patients, we've already seen things like increased muscle mass, and we have the first indication this year that we might be able to affect chronic kidney disease. So yeah, we're really excited about that. So when we look at this data, though, and through this repository, we're actually going to be looking at multi-omic data. So our repository gives you the ability to not only upload your telomere length and your whole genome sequence, uh, maybe your microbiome, but also all of the blood work that you've ever gotten done with your doctors, and share that with us to cure biological aging. This is what it looks like on our researchers' side. All of your data is anonymized. We don't know exactly who you are. Um, they are just simply analyzing the data to see what the drug performance is in these cutting edge technologies compared to how the rest of the population is doing. So again, it's HIPAA and GDPR compliant, and it's powered by Google. We knew that patients needed kits. Our patients needed a better methylation kit, as a matter of fact. So when we do gene therapies in patients, we send them all sorts of kits before they take the gene therapy, and we send them all sorts of kits after they take the gene therapies. And one of the ones that we wanted to look at is a more in-depth methylation kit. So this year, we're, we, are, we decided to launch our new methylation kit. It is the Illumina Epic Methylation 850. We've got the lowest price on the market for this advanced of a kit, and we're actually checking it against five different clocks. Um, we're hoping to spin out some proprietary information from doing such a vast array of testing, and we decided to open it up to the public, and luckily, we actually have doctor's clinics calling us and uh, putting in orders for uh, larger amounts of these kits, which is going to be helpful for our company because we didn't plan on making money here. We just wanted to give you something with a repository that you could use that we already needed for patients anyway. So what do you do with this data? How do you innovate care? So we've got gene therapies going into humans. We've got data coming back to us. Well, 
what we need to do is then innovate that technology. We know that treating biological aging isn't going to be one gene. It's going to be a multitude of genes. Uh, one of our scientific advisors is George Church. He's got 45 candidates. Uh, we're boiling that down. I don't think that we need 45. Uh, but um, today, we do in the future. He's abs George Church is always right, by the way. <laughs> uh, but we're looking for a gene therapy delivery method that can actually deliver five, six, or upwards of 10 genes at the same time with all of the benefits that we already have with AAV. We want to know that every cell that we affected got transduced with our genes of choice. And so we're working with Rutgers University um, and we are doing amazing things there. So we chose a vector that is much bigger than AAV. It can deliver multiple genes. It doesn't have genomic integration because we don't want to create things like cancer. Um, it can get multiple genes into it. We can target multiple tissues. We have a lower dose requirement which will make the gene therapies more cost effective. And we have a negligible immune response, which creates the perfect vector of the future. These are our mice. Uh, this is them right after they got um, infected with the virus. We're seeing where it goes and how effective it is. And we're using a couple different genes there. Now, this is what's really interesting. And I wish I could, but I can't show you the images right now. But there's somebody else from the company here, and we are crazy about the images from our mice right now. Um, we used aged mice, so they were 18 months to start with, which sets them in somewhere between the age of 60 and 70 for humans. Uh, so they were already losing their fur and things like that when they came into the study. And then we decided to treat them with two candidate genes that we put in provisionals for right away, although you know our goal is to do multiple genes at one time. Um, and uh, we delivered them in two different ways. Uh, we put in a patent for a specific delivery method uh, for um, uh, neurogenic disease. And then we did a general delivery that you saw uh, back there. And what's interesting is all of the mice are reacting to the gene therapy. And it didn't actually matter where we put it. We're having a good evidence of reaction in all of them. Uh, so uh, most notably what you can see, and I wish I could show you the picture of the mice, but our mice with the folostatin or the muscle enhancer are definitely bigger. They are very robust ladies. These are all female mice. And our telomerase induced mice uh, kept a lower weight for longer and then now as the old mice are becoming atrophied, um, they are more robust than them and they are the ones that I really wish you could see the pictures of right now. So anyway, um, that sums up what we're doing. So essentially, we are allowing people to get access to technologies now that our doctors agree um, are safe enough to go into humans. Uh, we are generating the data that hopefully will help multitude of companies become successful. We hope that you bring us your companies X, Y, and Z to platform their technology through this innovative platform, and then we are taking our knowledge base from the information that we get from those studies to create better drugs. And I really love the sentiment of this statement. If your dreams are not big enough, are they really worth doing? Are they worth going after? I think that your dreams should scare you, and I think that you should make them a reality. Right now, there are five past regulated gene therapies through the regulatory system, and each one of them comes at too high of a cost for the, for the general population. The cheapest gene therapy on the market today is $450,000 to treat one eye. We could do that for a fraction of the cost through our platform. And there really is no dollar value to human health. Uh, by working together, we can get these prices down by doing what's called scale. When you treat biological aging, you're treating the biggest unmet need on the planet. And that unmet need will not only fulfill the desire for health and life for you and I, but it's gonna bring a lot of cures back to kids giving them the ability to live long enough uh, to enjoy all the things that we have. And with that, I just want to say thank you. <laughs>